There is a pelleted or pelleted woodpecker right there. There he goes, flying off. Wildlife at its best here, I guess. So, today, I got some cuttings from a chaya or a Mayan spinach. And I dug up some uh, American persimmons, three, but I really didn't get many like fine roots and all with these guys. So I chopped a lot of them back. You know, I thought about just leaving them, you know, in the ground where I, where I dug them. But I said, well, I'll just take them and try them, put them in heavy shade, keep them moist, watered, baby them, severely prune them back and uh, see if they do anything. It's definitely not what I expected. You know, either the tap root is really big or or these are from root suckers from, you know, that are how, who knows how old they are because they've obviously been like mowed down over and over again um, throughout the years. And there they are. Passion flower that I did, haven't put in the ground yet. It's definitely growing and ready to go off and away somewhere. A lot of the pecan trees that I gave away way too soon. You know, I just potted them and gave them to somebody. They died within like, you know, days. They didn't really get babied. They were kind of in the shade, but not super shady. They were probably not watered well or, or misted. So we got all the pots back, I believe. And we'll try to baby some later to give away. The mulberries, they were in the same situation, but they're a little, bo little bit more resilient. So I think all the mulberries I gave away to this person, as they dropped all their leaves, they looked like this, and then they kind of rebutted out. So that's good at least. I may give, uh, give her some more um, mulberries and try to get a couple pecan trees for her and I gave her one of these uh, thornless prickly parakeet or cactus pads I gave her some arrowroot and a couple other things and oh yeah a uh, red Spanish pineapple and I got two wild pineapples back you know some for something these are some these are things you do not need need to plant anywhere near where you're going to be walking or working them with your hands in the garden they are some they got some nasty thorns on there you know or spines or whatever I still haven't planted the sunchokes or the cassava you know and then anywhere i need to really get something set up so i can plant some sunchokes and the cassava um the cassava is rooted so deep you know probably 14 inches plus you know that I need a nice mound if I'm gonna put it in like the wetlands area. But most likely I'm gonna put at least one of those in higher ground, like super sandy, well-draining soil. And the other one, if I can mound something up, I'll plant it in the mound. So the beauty berries are starting to bloom. Some of them are at least. Such pretty flowers. Don't seem to have much of a smell to them, though. I think this year we're going to take some autumn olives that's, you know, 16, 18 foot tall there and not really doing anything and just try to get some cuttings rooted, you know, for trading material or for um, nitrogen fixing or something. We just need to get some little pots or cups or something and uh, get some, some more stuff to make a, a cutting mix, you know, a sterile cutting mix and see what we can do you know, still as far as i know no signs of you know you know producing any fruit but maybe it'll be useful for a nitrogen fixing plant you know a companion plant to pecans or fruit trees other fruit trees and stuff like that these guys are amazing smelling it's very hard to spot the um, fruit on this uh, pineapple guava, which is right. Where's my finger? It's 
right there. Look at that. This camera won't even focus on it. So I've never got fruit on it. I haven't. It hasn't flowered for years. So I you know, started fertilizing it. We got four flowers, two flowers on each different genetically different plant. Some of the flowers were a little bit old that didn't take at least one of them out of the four, possibly three out of the four. I think, I think there were three possible fruits, but these are so hard to find when they're this small. Once the petals drop, you know, that's kind of your indicator. If you look when the petals dried up or whatever are still there and then you could say, okay, there it is. There's a little swelling, like a little grape or something. But once those petals fall off, they're almost impossible to find. Even when you know it almost is within two or three inches of where they're supposed to be. So uh, there's confirmed at least one still on there. Possibly two or three. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to see them more as they get bigger. But we definitely need to clear out this area around here and mulch it still. So back to the Suriname cherry, our original red one, which died to the ground basically. I mean, it, it came back up at like three foot high or so, and then it died again. But it's another two foot plus off the ground, bushy all over. There's seedlings all over here. So I think we're gonna be taking some seedlings soon and putting them into wetlands zone one. I'll keep them away from the Zills Black seedling. So we'll have a few of these over there and at least one Zills Black. You know, they might be a hundred foot away from each other. Just, you know, I'm not sure if pollination, you know, crop contamination is an issue with these guys or not. But the more we have fruiting, the more, you know, we're going to enjoy them. I like these, I think, just as much as the grafted Zills, you know, black Suriname cherry. I had one um, for the first time a week or two back. To me, they have the, the same or similar you know pine resin type flavor you know i haven't compared them side by side but they're very similar a lot of people say they're better you know which is why the guy had a grafted one for his personal use because seedlings aren't 100 percent true to uh their parent plant just taking a look at this wonderful pomegranate that's still growing here in the shade maybe i should take a couple um, clippings from it and try to root it because I've, I've been thinking about just moving the whole plant and a lot of people say wonderful isn't the, isn't the best variety for the for a Florida anyway but it may or may not produce for us I know that you know 30 years ago my dad had a wonderful in a similar area to to this and it probably only lived to be about eight or ten years old it formed like an eight or ten foot round canopy and it had like two three hundred fruit every year and then it just died one day and these are more desert like you know plants i think and we had them in a pretty wet zone so that could have been part of the reason why you know it had it, it met its demise and we might have just got really lucky that that cultivar and, and a pomegranate in general survive that long and produce so much fruit